the Isley Brothers career has endured from the 1950s till now. And although they've become iconic based on some of their most recognizable hits and because of the longevity of their lead singer Ronald Isley and guitarist Ernie Isley, who took the Isleys into the 21st century, I feel like much of the Isley Brothers story is still unknown to many, especially for a group that I consider to be one of the most consistent and prolific in rock, soul, R&B, and funk history. For instance, unless you were there listening to them during their historic 1970s stretch into the mid 80s with all those baby making hits and some inspirational unity based tracks, you might not know that it was their brother-in-law, Chris Jasper, who was their main songwriter, producer, and arranger, as well as keyboardist. I'll break some of that down here. But it should first be noted that unlike some of the Isley Brothers contemporaries, such as Earth, Wind & Fire, Al Green, The Temptations, and some of the Tom Bell produced Philly soul groups of the early to mid 70s, like the Delphonics, The Stylistics, and The Spinners, the Isley Brothers career started not in the 1970s, not even in the 1960s, but in the 1950s. Think about that. For a group that had a 2001 hit with Contagious from their Eternal album, who can you think of that can match that longevity? So when the Isleys had started off, they were a gospel quartet with Ronald or Ronnie, Rudolph, Rudy, O'Kelly, and Vernon Isley, who was actually their first lead vocalist. Keep in mind, this is like 15 years before the Jackson 5. However, when Vernon was 13, he was killed tragically when he was hit by a car while riding his bike. This crushed the other brothers, and they stopped making music for a while. They eventually returned to music a couple years later, with Ronald Isley becoming the lead vocalist. They also moved from their hometown in Cincinnati, Ohio, to New York and Teaneck, New Jersey, and switched from gospel music to secular popular music. They recorded a few marginally, regionally successful singles before signing with RCA and recording the song Shout in 1959, which became their first hit. It wasn't a mega success commercially, but it did reach the charts and put them on the map. It wasn't until the years that followed where Shout would live on to become the classic we now recognize it as. So after dropping their first hit song, again 1959, they couldn't duplicate any of that success with their next few singles and they left RCA two years later. Then in 1962, Burt Burns, the songwriter and producer who would later write several hits, including Van Morrison's Brown Eyed Girl, well Burt Burns wrote a song called Twist and Shout, which the Isley Brothers recorded, and that version of Twist and Shout hit number two on the R&B charts and number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. This was the Isley Brothers' first top 40 hit and was obviously covered by the Beatles a couple years later and their version would become the timeless classic. So after the Isley Brothers delivered on their second hit, they then hit another dry spell over the next couple years and then formed their own label, T-Neck Records, in a nod to T-Neck, New Jersey. This also marks the time that a pre-famed Jimi Hendrix played lead guitar for the trio. They actually recorded a few songs with Hendrix on guitar, including their song Testify. This was 1964. None of these songs, however, had big success. So Hendrix left the Isleys, and the brothers then signed with the iconic Motown, who was red hot. The Temptations had just landed their first hit, with the Smokey Robinson written, The Way You Do The Things You Do, My Guy by Mary Wells was big, The Miracles, The Marvelettes, Martha and the Vandellas were all hot, The Supremes released Baby Love that same year, Marvin Gaye was really starting to take off, he dropped How Sweet It Is that year. Well, the Isley Brothers recorded one hit during their time on Motown's Tamla label, which was the wonderful This Old Heart of Mine, written by the legendary Holland Dozier Holland team and Sylvia Moy. Love that song. And you can hear the iconic Funk Brothers providing the instrumentation there. So the Isleys had that one hit at Motown, their highest charting song at that point, but then their next several singles struggled and didn't break through. So they largely struggled from 65 to 68 and then left Motown to restart their T-Neck record label. They signed a distribution deal and then released It's Your Thing, which was really the huge turning point that the brothers needed. This was a funky track, very in line with the times, and this was a major commercial success. It's Your Thing hit number one on the R&B charts and number two on the Billboard Hot 100. By far their biggest success. Hell, it won them a Grammy. This was also the first time one of the younger brothers would be featured as their future guitarist Ernie Isley played bass on this track. 
They also recorded a pretty awesome live concert album called Live at Yankee Stadium in 1970, so they were as hot as ever at this point. They further included more family on their next album, moving Ernie from bass to guitar, having the other younger brother Marvin play bass, and then linking up with their brother-in-law, Chris Jasper, who was a childhood friend of the younger brothers and whose sister was married to one of the OG brothers, Rudy. So Chris Jasper was on the keyboards, but that really only scratches the surface. See, Chris Jasper was a classically trained musician, was well-schooled in several genres and styles, was big on music theory, and would become the Isley Brothers' main songwriter, producer, and arranger, as well as the keyboardist. So the three OG Isleys really shared the duties and let the younger brothers spread their wings musically and forge the sound that would lead the band. And that's the key word here, band which they now were, as opposed to a singing group that would work with different bands, songwriters, and arrangers. The visionary Chris Jasper, as well as Ernie and Marvin, would lead the Isley Brothers musically through the 70s and into the 80s, which that 70s and 80s would become their most iconic period as they started cranking out several quality albums. After their Given It Back album in 71, which features a pretty awesome cover of Bob Dylan's Lay Lady Lay, and then Brother 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 in 72, they would go on a historic run as this newly forged band, starting with 3 Plus 3 in 73, which had their remake to one of their 60s songs, Who's That Lady, but with their new flair. So if you want to hear how this new version of the Isley Brothers approached these instrumentals, just listen to the first several seconds of That Lady from the 3 Plus 3 album. You can hear the Jimi Hendrix influence in Ernie's explosive, euphoric, psychedelic, and soulful guitar. And when we continue our exploration of the Isley Brothers saga, we'll detail that phenomenal 70s and early 80s run, which featured amazing albums like the 3 Plus 3 I just mentioned, which also has Summer Breeze, and the underrated James Taylor cover, Don't Let Me Be Lonely Tonight. They've got The Heat Is On from 75, Harvest For The World in 76, and Go For Your Guns in 77. That's the one with Footsteps In The Dark, which was sampled on Ice Cube's It Was A Good Day, and my favorite, Voyage To Atlantis. This run would make its way to 83's Between The Sheets, which had their famous title track, which was sampled on Notorious B.I.G.'s Big Papa, and Choosy Lover, which Bone Thugs and Harmony and DJ Unique sampled on Buddha Lovers. By the way, Bone Thugs classic The Crossroads also samples the Isley Brothers. That one samples Make Me Say It Again Girl. Listen closely to the instrumentals of both. Seriously though, you couple this level of songwriting and instrumentation with Ronald Isley's incredibly smooth and versatile voice where he can go from super silky smooth to strong and powerful, all soulful. Then you've got the backing vocals of Rudy and O. Kelly. What a powerhouse of a team. And it's family. Speaking of which, we'll also get into the Isley Brothers breakup, the spinoff band Isley Jasper Isley, and the deaths of a few of the brothers over the years, most recently Rudolph Isley in 2023. And we'll get into Ronald and Ernie Isley, bringing the Isley Brothers through the 90s and into the 2000s. But I'll end this review with this question. What other artist or band can you think of that has had this type of longevity? For them to have their first hit at the end of the 50s, a few more hits in the 60s, a historic run in the 70s, hits in the 80s, the 90s, and even the early 2000s. Really think about that and let me know if you could think of any others. Also, what are your three favorite Isley Brothers songs? Let me know in the comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you love music and music history like I do. I'm Woog, thanks for tuning in.